Let's talk about ABSA. It successfully concluded a five-year, $100 million special facility agreement with the China Development Bank. Now, this is the first major transaction between these two lenders, and it's get it providing uh, funding to small and medium-sized enterprises. Now, the initial drawdown is going to be based on ABSA's current funding needs, and it may be increased in the future to assist with new funding opportunities within the Barclays Africa group operations. China Development Bank is one of the biggest lenders in Africa. It was founded in 1994 to set up as a development finance institution under the leadership of China State Council. Now, the bank has assets of roughly $2 trillion. It's the world's largest development finance institution. Right then, so what exactly does this mean for SMEs in couple of countries. Let's find out. Lesiba Mutata, he's the executive chief economist uh, at uh, Alexander Forbes Investments. He joins us now live from uh, Johannesburg. Uh, Lesiba, good to see you as always. So just put some numbers on this for us. Do you have any idea of the sort of terms that apply to this $100 million uh, facility and how that compares to other such deals? Yeah, th this was an interesting deal because uh, the Chinese Development Bank has, has had had deals with state-owned enterprises largely, and we've seen that they, they were in energy, in energy, and they were funding those type of uh, sectors and projects. With a commercial bank, this was quite a peculiar one, uh, but quite welcome because um, some of these banks have to adhere to some of these uh, rules that comes from Basel III, capital adequacy and the lending criteria gets quite, uh, quite tighter to this end. One, one looks forward to see the details of how they will liberalize or make easier the lending condition in order to draw down on that facility. Much welcome in a sector that's much needed in SA, small and medium enterprises, which actually can lift up the unemployment that we see here. So this is a good deal. Indeed. So let's let's look at the demand side, though. I mean, South Africa's debt to disposable income ratio was about 74 percent or so this time last year. How has it changed since then? So in the first quarter from the quarterly bulletin of the South African Reserve Bank, it shows that there has been deleveraging continuing uh, at 73.2 percent of disposable income. Debt levels are beginning to actually structurally come down. Um, it's also a function of a weak economic outcome. It's also a function that households more specifically are overburdened by debt uh, and, and they're, they're paying down some debt, which is, which is well, it's a welcome uh, uh, outcome because uh, with, with much debt, you can't actually spend further without having dealt with the interest before you begin to even deal with the principal component of that loan. Indeed. So the, looking at those numbers again, the, the total amount of outstanding general loans and advances uh, between the first and the second quarters uh, falling by anywhere between $35 million and $200 million in households and corporates respectively. Uh, what does this tell us, though, about the ability of households and businesses in general to take on more debt amidst the current recession in South Africa? Yeah, so it's interesting because a country that's a non-investment grade on its foreign currency. Uh, we have seen lending standards being tightened by banks. In other words, risk committees before they issue new debt, especially to households. They will require high interest rates. They will make it more difficult for, for funding, funding that debt. Uh, and what we're finding now is that it shows in the rate of growth of household debt is quite, uh, quite negative, actually. And what we find is that although corporates and their rate of growth of demanding debt is, is slowing, it still remains around 10%. Uh, and I think that talks to an outcome where South Africa could actually see economic growth that slows, but not an outright recession that is similar to what we've seen in Russia or in Brazil when they had issues around ratings. Indeed. One last question for you, Lesiba. Um, in the first quarter, we saw real household spending contract by about 2.3%. Real household disposable income has also declined. To what extent can those two trends be changed by a rate cut from the South African Reserve Bank uh, in its next meeting in late September? Yeah, very interesting that the Saab actually has led the market in its view. They've seen that inflation could fall to about 4% when we do our own calculations. 
In fact, the market has underpriced the potential of further rate hike, great cuts. Uh, and what we're likely to see here is could be quite a cycle of rate cuts. So we could see, in fact, cumulatively about 75 of 100 or 100 basis points of rate cuts that could ensue on the back of improved inflation. That will help. It will help household spending. We actually began to see some positive numbers in retail activity this week, which has shown that retail sales began to go up, uh, substantiated by general retailers. Uh, we do find that people are not buying cars or even houses. Uh, for that matter, it is still quite a difficult household scenario, but there is some improvement that could come. I do think that uh, rate cuts, if, if they become deep as one begins to see now, they could be very helpful in the medium term, 18 months from where we sit.